To start with, we're going to have a look at Photoshop's interface, which is the way that you're going to actually interact with the software to create your web designs. So if we look at the right side of the screen initially, you'll notice that there are a number of panels there, with each of which have a number of tabs and controls in each one that give information for each of those specific panels. If we look at the top, we can see, for example, the color tab. Um, you've got the adjustment tab below that. You've got the layers tab at the bottom. On the left side of your screen, you've got the toolbox. And from here, you can select uh, any tool that you can see by hovering the mouse over and clicking on it. Um, for example, the top tool there, the most common one is the move tool represented by an arrow icon. If you just click on that, you will be able to move objects and images around your canvas or your screen. Also, you'll notice that some of the tools have a small triangle. Uh, this means that there are hidden tools behind the main one that you can see. For example, if you look at the crop tool and hold down the mouse button on it, you can reveal the two tools underneath it, which are the slice tools. These are quite commonly used tools also, so just to be aware that anything with a tiny triangle has hidden tools behind it. We also have um, an option in CS4 and CS5 to springboard tool selection. This means that we can <clears throat> hold down any sh keyboard shortcut. For example, if we were on the hand tool, if we select that and we wanted to go to the move tool, if we hold down the keyboard shortcut for the move tool, which is the letter V on your keyboard, then we can temporarily move to the move tool. And as soon as we let go of V, it will bring us back to the hand tool. Okay, um, at the top of your screen, we can see that there is a menu bar with drop down menus. Um, each of these represents different options within Photoshop, depending on what you're trying to do. Below that, you've got the Applications bar, which gives us quick access to some features in Photoshop, such as Grids, Zoom, uh, and so on, all of which can be accessed from the menus or the toolbox, but this is for quick access. Um, if we have a look at the Zoom tool, just for example, we can click on the Zoom tool here or in the toolbar, and if we click on the image in our main panel, we can zoom in one step. Also, if we click and hold the mouse button and press up or down, we can continuously zoom in or out, depending on how far we go. The hand tool is also a very useful tool to be aware of. If you hold down the space bar, you can temporarily choose the hand tool or select it from the toolbar. And what that allows you to do is move your image if it's larger than your canvas. Move the image without actually changing its position, so you're just basically moving your field of view of what you can see of the image. At, in the um, application bar at the top and also in the menus, there's a new tool called Rotate View. This means that we can actually rotate the view, which is very handy if you were drawing, for example, using a, a pen and tablet. <clears throat> or um, if you just want to have a different perspective without actually rotating the image itself. A handy feature in CS5 is full screen mode. So if you press the F key on your keyboard twice, it will bring you into full screen mode, which brings a black background behind the image you're looking at and also allows you to zoom in, gets rid of all the tools and just allows you to focus on the image at hand. So uh, just to finish off this section of the tutorial, in summary, the look and feel of Adobe Photoshop CS 5.5 has been very much integrated with the other Adobe software so that the look and feel of the interfaces is much more consistent across all of the software. This means that you can jump from one to another very easily without having to change the way that you're interacting with the interface.